TV into that. Ah, I am. Yeah. That's it. Uh, all right, Philip. Uh, you don't look so good. <sighs> I'll be fine. We haven't seen you for a long time. Yeah, I've been real busy. I'm busy for family. You don't show respect. You're right, you're right. I gotta fix it. Okay, so go in, right. say hello to Mama Rose. He called you that? To your face? Yeah, hey. What's up with that? I asked him to pick up some canned plum tomatoes on his way home from work, and he forgot. Couldn't he just go back out and get some? Oh, the stores were closed by then. Closed by then? What time did he get home? It was almost 11. 11? I thought he worked days at the factory. He does. Then he teaches driving lessons for extra money so we can replace the carpets with wood floors. He's got two jobs and you yelled at him because he forgot the tomatoes. Really? He just doesn't listen. Nobody should call someone that. But if you don't want to be called that, you shouldn't act like one. You fancy Mama Rose. Last week I spoke about many of the people who influenced and helped me prepare the screenplay for my first feature film, Good Grief It's Friday. Today, staying with influencers, I'll talk about those who have been particularly helpful to me in shooting, post-producing, and marketing the film as I invite you to come inside my movie. I came to this project having produced a lot of programming over the years. However, I wanted to ensure that I was as prepared as possible for this significant production. D4 Darius on YouTube quickly became a source of valuable and practical insights about filmmaking. His presentations are creative, entertaining, and useful. Film Riot, while a very different kind of presentation, also offered useful information and entertainment. Both also demonstrated many DIY hacks that make it possible to make your production look bigger than the budget might suggest. Prior to launching Good Grief It's Friday, I produced a music video based on the Ray Whaling song Strawberry Alice. Because my career path had taken me into leadership roles, I hadn't actually had my hands on production in a long time. The production of the short music video offered a great way uh, to work my way back into production. I acquired a nonlinear editing software from Cyberlink called PowerDirector. Now I have some background in film editing and linear tape editing, but I found the learning curve for this software pretty comfortable. It certainly helped that Malik Whitaker operates a YouTube channel for PowerDirector University. He's an entertaining guy who offers a wide spectrum of useful information on editing and PowerDirector in particular. About the time I began post-production for my feature film, I became aware of DaVinci Resolve from a company called Black Magic. I migrated first to the free version and then to the studio version of this software because it better matched my approach to post-production. It is also a film industry standard software for things like color grading. Black Magic offers a number of online training programs for Resolve, which are very well presented and useful. However, I have also spent a lot of time on YouTube with a variety of presenters who drill down on specific tasks in post-production with Resolve. While there are many available online, I've gravitated to videos by Jason Yedlovsky, Casey Ferris, Jamie Fenn, and Billy Ripka. I like their presentation styles and choice of topics. I've also subscribed to The Modern Filmmaker featuring Marcel. He manages to take many aspects of post-production, including color grading, to a level of an art form. His passion for the work makes for engaging segments. Check out all of these guys on YouTube. They all offer way more than I've described here. Having written, shot, and post-produced my film, I was left with a pretty weighty question. What do I need to do to help Good Grief It's Friday find an audience. Enter Jay Horton. Jason operates a YouTube channel that is focused on all things related to the business side of indie films. He's an engaging presenter who shares his considerable experience and good judgment gained through the making and marketing of many narrative and documentary films. He speaks in real-world terms about the challenges of making, marketing, and distributing low-budget indie films. 
One of his videos speaks about the value of FilmHub as a distribution platform for indie films. The short story is that if you want to get your film onto online platforms like Prime Video, you need to go through someone like FilmHub because the platforms won't talk to individual filmmakers. Good to know. Another of his videos goes into the detailed steps required to get your film into the hands of FilmHub. I followed his instructions and have since seen FilmHub place Good Grief It's Friday onto Vimeo, Zuzu, Popsia on Plex, Tubi, Zumo, IBCN, and Amazon Prime Video. My little indie film has been made available in 22 countries. Shane Finn is an Australian actor whose family was thrilled to see Shane's performance as Alfie on Amazon Prime Video in his home country. While the income has so far been pretty meager, all of the actors have had their wonderful work on display worldwide. For me, that's pretty cool. Here's a scene, one of many, that is made better by some of the hacks I learned on the internet. It started raining five minutes after I left the office. Looking back on the past few days, it somehow fits. All I needed at that point was for Murph and his cronies to show up. I wanted to get there real early to make sure I had the drop on the situation. If this guy did knock off Donnie, he might still be in the mood for a scrap. It didn't occur to me that the crook's crook would be late. It was almost 10.30, still no show. What was he up to? The only thing I hate more than an incompetent thief is a crafty one. What if he was on to me? Worse still, what if Murph had got to him first? I figured I'd better take a look around. This whole business was starting to wear a little thin. Man, I hadn't been this nervous since I graduated the academy 17 years ago. I wondered why this thing had the cops so clammy. It just isn't like Murph to be such a contrary jackass. And what the hell did Friday have to do with this? Well, I'd have to deal with her in the morning. At least the rain finally let up. Oh, great. What a time for Murph to show up. And no place to hide. The warehouse, good. Thank God that the alley was so dark. If I was fastened, just maybe. I was surrounded. If the door wasn't locked, maybe I could just slip in there and get to the other end of the building before they could search the area. This just wasn't going the way I had planned. Now, I was thinking, if I could just get back to my flat and what's left of the Irish do, I'd promise to forget about this whole mess until the morning and... I should also point out that I subscribed to Storyblocks, which was a great source of stock shots and for background music. It was not expensive, but was clearly money well spent, and they aren't paying me to say that. Nor are any of the resources I've mentioned in the past couple of segments. I hope you found this useful and entertaining. I look forward to the next time, when once again I can invite you to come inside my movie.